Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this wonderful session with uh, Dr. Anchal Bansal. Bhagwan ke ghar mein der hai, magar andher nahi. So, internet also sometimes troubles us. So, we have uh, Adasya Mahopatra, Anita Rani, and many more who are all online. And uh, we have today none less than Anchal Bansal. Uh, uh, who is a need PG topper last year? Hello, doctor. And uh, um, Anshil, can 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 we know from which place you are from and what was your rank a bit about before we start the session? Uh, sir, I'm from Haryana. Uh, place is Ratia. I have done my UG from Assam Medical College, Dibrugarh, and my need uh, all India need PG rank was 428. Great. So, 428 rank out of an entrance competed by nearly 2 lakh doctors is like almost winning a Nobel Prize in medicine. So, it must be a very proud moment for you when uh, you uh, join. But generally, in the top 1000 ranks, people prefer uh, specialties like radiology, general medicine, etc. right? So, dermatology, was it your passion from day one in medical college? What was the reason? Actually, I was more interested in internal medicine and dermatology only. So, wow. when I got the rank, I was looking for, I got general medicine seat initially in PJ Rota. When I got an opportunity to, uh, like, I got a seat in dermatology, then I switched. So why the skin is so special for you? Who influenced you the most to choose MD Dermatology? Was it like any teacher in the uh, medical college or dad or mom or anybody who is a dermatologist? No, no. I feel the specialty itself is very appealing. Uh, with so many varied presentations, it gives a very much clinical hand. You don't have to rely on investigation or just keep uh, roaming here and there. Your knowledge and the patient that helps you in making the diagnosis. And that's what I needed as a physician to work on. So dermatology. Wow. Wonderful. That's very good to know. A lot of students keep uh, asking the question, sir. Uh, good speciality to choose, etc., etc. So to start with quickly, let's uh, uh, go for a rapid fire session, which is uh, a new trend that we started. To listen a didactic lecture from a senior national faculty is a boring job. Whereas uh, all the way a neat PG topper who know the secret. It's not that easy to get into the top thousand ranks in this highly competitive entrance. To listen from uh, a topper as a teacher is uh, a great privilege for everybody. So we have Deepak Pahrot and many more who are all online. So let's make the great beginning doctor. Sure, sir. Yes. Now, to start with, what are these lesions in a solid organ transplant recipient? As we can see in this picture, generally MCQ questions don't give us much time to think upon every clinical scenario. We have to just pick up the main significant points. As uh, written in the first line itself, uh, solid organ transplant recipient that immediately makes a patient a immunocompromised case. As we see in the lesions, there are red uh, papular nodular lesions over the neck region and over the arm region. And there are discrete red papular nodular lesions in an, in an immunocompromised patient. Generally, we have, uh, we have to keep certain differentials in our mind, like Kaposi sarcoma, that I would generally uh, say, but that has a varied clinical presentation. Another can be a cutaneous lymphoma, then comes a rare entity that is bacillary angiomatosis and uh, can be a rare case of pyogenic granuloma. Uh, if we elaborate more of the history, then we can, uh, if there is a history of uh, some uh, infe uh, 
like bite tick bite or uh, history of uh, some pet in the house like cat we can go for bacillary enzymatosis as the characteristic lesions here are red papillary nodular lesions which uh, which generally indicate this red redness these are proliferated blood vessels because the bacillary enzymatosis as bacteria proliferates in the endothelium of capillaries as uh, due to proliferation of the bacil uh, bacillus in the endothelium there is formation of granulomas that uh, is seen uh, uh, externally on the skin as depicted here the causative organisms can be bartonella hensley and bartonella quintana the vectors can be lice tick and fleas and we Great. have to keep the differentials in the mind kaposi sarcoma cutaneous lymphoma pyogenic granuloma in the treatment the drug of choice will be doxycycline and in certain cases we can go for erythromycin as well wonderful now so what are these lesions in immunocompromised patients doctor whenever we see a picture first we have to depict uh, characterize the type of lesion as we can see here there are some ulcerated lesion with an erythematous margin purulent base and some were necrotic lesions great so ulcerative Uh, we can, yeah. as as a uh, lesion um, characteristic purulent base and necrotic lesion that uh, that some and as we can see in this picture there is slightly greenish discharge that indicates some pseudomonal infection and that goes towards in favor of ethyma gangrenosum which is caused by pseudomonas aeruginosa great So, what are these lesions in a patient caused by a gram-negative diplococcus? As we commonly uh, come across gram-negative diplococci, these are nizaria. This should be a nizaria organism. Generally, patient uh, presents initially with some macular, papular, or pustular lesion. Initial presentation of any meningococcal infection is with a papular pustular lesion. As in, and in second picture, we can see petechial lesions. as we prog- uh, as the disease progress it might form purpuric patches over the whole limb and patient might go into meningitis leading to meningococcemia caused by nizaria meningitidis as Great. this is common in uh, 0 to 5 and 5 15 to 17 years age group nizaria meningitidis is an encapsulated gram negative diplococci the uh, causative uh, a uh, main uh, antigen responsible for meningococcemia is the pili of nizaria capsule and lipoligosaccharide which in cell can act as endo so yeah is yeah yes okay yes, i think we had a little voice break so, yeah uh maybe what you can do doctor is uh, the voice is getting broken so one minute i'll try to add you back into the stream one minute doctor i'm just adding you back to the screen sometimes internet is uh, uh, a bit enigmatic uh, entity uh, as all of you know very well we are very happy to see 15 plus online students every day 10 pm in the night we organize an hour session on um, across all 365 days with a topper in the neat pg entrance who is a recent topper which will uh, um, uh, add a lot of philip um for your preparation because the way the toppers think the way the toppers can offer the secrets on how to remember uh is the most inspiring thing dr anchel is a 400 plus rank in the last neat pg 2020 so i hope uh, all of our um, audience can understand uh, sometimes internet can baffle our uh, flow uh, that didn't happen yesterday Yesterday we had an orthopedic session. It was really very smooth. 
So, but meanwhile, I'll try to run through a few questions before Ranchal joins the um, uh, uh, live broadcast. So, doctor, these are the gram-positive bacterial infection. So, what is this infection? Now, the online students can punch your answers. You know, yeah, that's good. Now, Dr. Anjali is back. Yes, good, doctor. Uh, now, you are back into the screen. You, you are audible, doctor. You are audible. In this... You can do one thing, doctor. You can even... Uh, put off the video so that uh, the first the... Okay. one minute uh, what you can do is you can uh, I have joined the session yeah there is a voice break doctor you know uh, one minute yeah, can you speak now? Am I audible now, sir? You are audible. You are audible, doctor. Yes, sir. Please go. Yeah, speaker. please go ahead. So, uh, here we... Okay. Okay, sir. So, here we hint... ...infection caused by a gram-positive bacteria. And first, in this uh, first uh, in a picture, we can see the characteristic ca indurated um, um, nodular lesion at the angle of jaw. And if we very closely look into the uh, this picture, we could see a could see multiple analysis. And patient, if gives history of discharging, you can do one thing. You can uh, produce from the lesion. You can put off your video, doctor. Uh, that, that will make you. In the second picture, ah. you you can put off the video that will make your audio get uploaded fast. We'll try to do that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, please go ahead, doctor. Yeah. Yeah, you can continue. You can come back, doctor. Now, can you can you continue? Yeah. Sir, I guess your mic is turned off. Uh, uh, yeah, now, now you are very much audible and visible. No problem. Let's not disturb this. Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, could you uh, get my points in uh, for the first picture? Okay. Yeah. I dis. No, no. Next picture. Yes. Next question, please. Yeah, we have already discussed all these points. How to go towards diagnosis of meningococcemia? Previous picture only, you know, mycosis, sir. Okay. Uh, we'll, we, we'll go forward with this uh, question. Yeah. So here the presence of uh, the lesion uh, at the angle of the jaw, points it towards actinomycosis. And um, that's right. And uh, this is a case of Madura foot. Uh, now, let us quickly go to this question, Doctor. Uh, there are different granules, and uh, based on the color of the granule uh, grain, the organism is being guessed. So, what are the various colors of the grains, and what are the organisms of them? Am I audible, sir? Now you're audible, yes. Am I audible? Okay, sir. Uh, sir, so, uh, if we see the color of granules, we can actually uh, the type of mechanism and we can treat person accordingly. In cases of white color, generally no cardiac basal lenses, no cardiac these are two disposable organisms. Cardiac resistance causes a leaf case odor, and steroids causes a, a systemic environment. Pink granules are antinomadura and madura. 
yellow to brown granules are features of streptomyces solensis red granules Features of actinomegaly, and one very uh, close differential that is U mycetoma. In that we see black granules, which is caused by a fungus. So please mention here black granules as well, which are caused by two my, also known as U mycetoma. Great. Uh, so, what is this lesion in a patient and caused by? A gram-negative organism, doctor. So we can see a greenish uh, dispigmentation of the nail plate, which generally uh, is common in Pseudomonas infection. As we know, Pseudomonas is a gram-negative uh, organism that produces varying color of pigments and is responsible for the various color of discharge or nail plate color. As greenish color, most commonly asked question that is due to pyocyanin. Yellowish green color is due to fluorescein, and brown to blackish color is due to pyomelanin. To uh, the disease caused by Pseudomonas infection, that is green nail syndrome, is a subungual uh, pseudomonal infection, which is responsible for greenish discoloration of the nail and causes onycholysis. Onycholysis means splitting of the nail plate. Generally, treatment we give a local antibiotic like uh, we can give topical uh, ciprofloxacin or thymol solution in clinical practice. And the we advise yes. general nail care. Now, and what is this region caused by a vaccine preventable organism? So, uh, first in this picture, a site of lesion on the lower leg, we can see an ulcer, a punched out ulcer with characteristically rolled out margin, well-defined rolled out margin. These are characteristic of a cutaneous diphtheria infection. As we know, diphtheria is a vaccine preventable organism. We can see at its base, a, a character, can, can you show the picture, sir? Yes. yes. At its base, we can see brownish uh, exudate. Uh, as we know, diphtheria that forms a pseudo membrane, but whether it's partial diphtheria that uh, forms pseudo membrane in oral cavity, here it is forming at the ulcer base. The causative Correct. organism is Corynebacterium diphtheri, uh, and which produces diphtheria toxin and is responsible for the characteristic okay. ulcer. So, what is this gram positive spore forming rod causing this lesion? Uh, okay, so uh, first, first of all, in the lesion, we can see blackish uh, crust or blackish necrotic tissue, which is very characteristic of anthrax caused by bacillus anthracis, which is a spore forming rod. And uh, on microscopy, we, we see it as bamboo stick appearance. Anthrax causes three types of lesions pulmonary, cutaneous, and GIT. Cutaneous lesions are caused due to some minor trauma. So first, uh, first characteristic lesion of any anthrax infection is a malignant pustule, which occurs at the site of inoculation of the uh, bacteria, that is at the site of trauma. Gradually, the lesion, uh, first it forms a papule that gradually forms a bulla, which then uh, forms hemorrhagic crust and undergoes necrosis to form an, a characteristic eschar as seen in this picture. That's good. So Eschard is one of the important uh, associated uh, feature. Now, in the meat handlers, fishermen, veterinarians, if you see this kind of lesion, what's your diagnosis, doctor? Uh, sir, uh, based upon the occupation, we don't have much differentials. Uh, if we see, first of all, we will see the lesion, which is pink to violaceous patch on the hand. That is exposed working site. With we can see slight central clearing over the palm. The lesion is extending over the webs and is uh, very characteristically demarcated. It is a very uh, like diagnostic of erysipeloid infection, which is common in fish handlers, veterinarians. It is caused by erysipelotheric rusopathy and uh, fever. Uh, a patient also presents with other systemic complaints, and treatment generally is penicillin only. Great. So what is this characteristic lesion, doctor? Here we can see a painful swollen lower limb. Yeah. In this yes, picture, we, 
uh, as we can see there is very dusky violaceous colored uh, lower limb which appears very swollen and formation of hemorrhagic bullae and if we if on palpation there if we hear some crepitus that goes in favor of gas gangrene which is caused by an anaerobic organism that is clostridium perfringens the disease is very much common uh, at the site of trauma and was previously first diagnosed in uh, uh, in war uh, soldiers during the world war this is a classical world war uh, battlefield uh, uh, lesion of gas gangrene which is clostridial myonecrosis and mainly we need to do surgical debridement and extensive antibiotic care the now, what is this woodland showing a bright coral red fluorescence? In this picture, first, first in a picture in axillary region, we can see a well demarcated patch with reddish brownish discoloration, and on coral red fluorescence, it gives bright, uh, um, bright on wood slamp, it gives bright coral red fluorescence. That is eventually diagnostic of erythrasma caused by Coronibacterium minutissima. Great. Yes, Cornibacterium minucetum is a gram-positive rod-shaped bacteria and often clindamycin, erythromycin, etc. And all that coral red fluorescence is because of the coproporphyrin 3 is one of the favorite MCQ in the exam. Now, what is this uh, non-inflammatory infection because of the Cornibacterium doctrine? In the pressure regions, we can see uh, discrete shallow circular lesions with punched out appearance that is characteristic of pitted keratolysis on the pressure bearing area caused by Corinibacterium species, species or Cytococcus sedentarius. Is there any chance that this can be? Uh, is there any chance that this can be confused with psoriasis? No, sir. In psoriasis, we can see characteristic plaques. Plaques and these lesions have very, very, very deep, uh, presentation. Okay. Psoriasis can never be a differential in this case. And palmoplantar psoriasis as such is very less in incidence. Right. Absolutely. So, uh, it is the pitted keratolysis. In a preschool child, the infection that we are seeing typically, it is caused by what and what is this? So we have a lot of differentials in such infection, uh, in such presentation though. It's very difficult for me to tell a single diagnosis. But yes, as we see in common uh, clinical practice, uh, it could be a perianal streptococcal cellulitis. Though we have very close differentials like different uh, diaper rash or candidiasis. Of course, we need more clinical uh, eye hints for making this diagnosis and it is Great. caused by as we know uh, gram uh, streptococcal uh, it's a uh, streptococcus pyogenes which is a group a beta hemolytic streptococci and yeah characteristic lesions are seen around in this great so what is this uh, in this picture we can see uh, uh, and also with uh, which is covered with uh, small bullet and uh, pustules and it is covered with a blackish hard adherent crust blackish hard adherent crust that is feature of ecthyma ecthyma is a pyogenic infection of skin caused by st uh, staphylococcus aureus and streptococcus um, uh, pyogenes great so the ulcer, uh, this crust we can see the base of ulcer which is very much indurated in cases of ecthyma. Great. So, ecthyma is not ecthyma gangrenosum. Clearly, sir. Ecthyma gangrenosum and ecthyma, these are totally two differential entities. One is caused by Suramonas, another is caused by a gram positive organism, Staphylococcus or Streptococcus. They, how we, uh, we can differentiate them very much clinically based upon their presentation as we can see the crust in ecthyma gangrenosum is very much hard and it's difficult to remove once we remove we could see an ulcer while in ecthyma gangrenosum we could see purulent exudate at the base which is generally greenish in color due to pseudomonas infection and right. there will be characteristic erythematous margin in ecthymatous uh, in ecthyma gangrenosum which is not seen in ecthyma cases
in later Great. stages. Wonderful. So this diffuse exanthem with this strawberry appearance of the tongue. What's your diagnosis, doctor? Mm -hmm. uh, it's very much a feature of scarlet fever which is again uh, a disease caused by group A beta hemolytic streptococci. It's uh, scarlet fever is a trite of pharyngitis, fever and rash. So I want to uh, explain somewhat about features of the rash. See rash, uh, this disease is common in 5 to 15 years of age group and rash characteristically appears on second day. Uh, the rash first uh, appears on the trunk then it uh, spreads as fine punctate erythema which is known as sandpaper like or sunburn with goose pimples. And uh, this rash then become generalized in three to four days. Then we can, see, uh, in skin falls, we can see capillary prominences, which is known as pastia lines. And Nowadays, pediatricians, uh, even for a little sneeze also, they throw antibiotics. Uh, do we still see scarlet fever? Uh, no, sir, it's very, it has <laughs> decreased. Only for entrance exams. Only for entrance yeah, exams. Exactly, exactly. Now, yeah, one, yeah. one curious question I want to ask uh, uh, on behalf of all of our audiences. Uh, there are so many things to remember for entrance exam. How do you use to manage so many? Because 19 subjects have uh, anesthesia will talk about the color of cylinders and uh, uh, PSM will talk about the size of the sand particles in the rapid sand filter. Uh, so many things we need to imagine and remember. Is there any advice you want to give to the need PG aspirants, doctor? Uh, sure, sir. Uh, I would always, uh, I, my approach always has been systematic. So what I do is always I take up uh, subjects. When I have plenty of time, I always take up hard subjects, which are hard to remember. I take take them up, give them plenty of time and the subjects which are very strong, I generally keep them for my last time. So the hard subjects, they eventually become uh, my strong points and strong are already strong. So that helps me in uh, building more of confidence because at last time of preparation, what we need is more of confidence. Gradually what happens, there is so much to remember. We tend to forget things. That's uh, unique, unique. That's not unique with any, uh, with a single person. That's common with everyone. So we keep hard subjects. We will. That will give us moral boost. You know, we have to study more. We have to study more. We have to do more revisions. But eventually, when we come to the end, we keep. When we keep on devising hard subjects, they become easy, and our strong subjects are already a positive point. Great. So that's a most important thing is the subjects, the topics, where we are good, where we are not good, our consciousness knows that. There is not always a great need of a mock test to precipitate that. Unfortunately, mock tests created are also created purposefully too tough and uh, unnecessarily demotivate the students. So it's more easier uh, if we ourselves uh, make a rough uh, estimate of what are the topics that we are lagging behind? Great. Now, Dr. Amchal, uh, I should say that you are an epitome of orderliness and uh, uh, what you call your entropy is uh, very high. So were you like that from the year one of the medical college or uh, uh, suddenly you realized one day when you are in the ENT hospital or in final year and then started uh, becoming better? When did the realization come uh, in life? You know, for a few guys like us, realization didn't come even at 40. Uh, so uh, when did you realize? Are you orderly from your school days? Or, uh, Actually, so yeah, I'm quite sincere from my school days itself. And I've always been a topper, be it MBBS, be it my uh, pre-school days. <laughs> you have to give a punch to the guys in the class and get the first rank. Otherwise, you won't rest that easily, right? Good, good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, must be anatomy, physiology, all the subjects, you must be getting a scoring good in MBBS days. I was fine. I was fine till uh, final year. I was among the toppers, but I became university topper in final year only. <laughs> wow. So, final year only, you said that. 
<laughs> we are the yeah. only school who so hardly passes it. That we need that shows we need consistency for any efforts. We need consistency. Nice. Nobody is born uh, topper. We right. need consistency in our efforts. Great, that's wonderful. That's really um, a very important thing that we, we we need to learn. You know, subject we can learn from anywhere, but uh, what is that called as the strategy, that inspiration uh, to become something great? We can only get it when we talk to the people who topped the entrance exam. So that is the main idea. As old teachers. Uh, we had been training the uh, students past almost a quarter century. 22 years I had been training students. Some bit can be given by anybody. But uh, the tips, the strategy to become a winner can only be given one to two year uh, older uh, need PG topper. That is the whole purpose of this uh, uh, evening session every day at uh, 10 p.m. to get one of the toppers to be on uh, the floor to discuss both the subject and also the strategy. Now, Doctor, continuing our rapid fire session, um, rapidly progressive multi-organ illness with high mortality with this clinical presentation. What is your uh, 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 diagnosis, Doctor? Uh, first clinician point is it's rapidly progressive in a child. And in the third picture, we, we can see characteristic desquamation. In initial two pictures, though it's very, uh, uh, uncharacteristic, but the in first picture over trunk we can see characteristic edema, which is a feature of toxic shock syndrome. Edema with coating over the tongue and desquamation in the third picture, which is right. more toxic shock syndrome, which is can be caused by Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus, and is common in uh, age group of 15 to 40 years, generally females. Uh, is this Nikolsky, doctor? Is this Nikolsky? Uh, of course, sir. Uh, sir, no. In Nikolsky, when we put a lateral pressure, we can see the peeling of the skin. And in it, we can see pseudo Nikolsky positive. False Nikolsky is positive. It's okay. not true in trapidomal split. Great. So, streptococcal toxic shock syndrome, which is super antigen mediated and uh, pseudo Nikolsky positive. And mainly penicillinase resistant penicillins or oral clindamycin is considered to be the treatment of choice. Now, this, what is your diagnosis, doctor? In this, first of all, we have to uh, see the type of lesion. It's a erythematous a nodular lesion with a central uh, pustular, uh, uh, central pustule, which can be a feature of uh, cellulitis. Uh, sorry, Great. Except one quick question, Dr. Keetu is asking uh, a very good question for our earlier one. Uh, why not this is Kawasaki is what she's asking. Dr. Keetu. Sure, sir. Very, very closest differential is Kawasaki. Truly, uh, you are uh, totally right. So in Kawasaki, it's first of all very uncommon in our uh, Indian population. And another clinching point in Kawasaki will be involvement of uh, eyes that will show conjunctivitis there will be if we see the tongue there is characteristic red swollen tongue and always there will be mention of uh, presence of cervical lymphadenopathy so there are main five clinical diagnostic points of kawasaki we have all we always have in clinical practice we have to keep that in differential but seeing this picture uh, the discrimination yeah that might favor kawasaki but other points like conjunctivitis Cervical lymphadenopathy, they should have been uh, uh, be there in the clinical picture. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, doctor, uh, we were talking about this question. So, what is your diagnosis, doctor? So, uh, this could be actually a folliculite. Uh, I'm not very sure. Uh, it is basically an abscess. Simply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, abscess can be streptococcal, and um, that's a point of interest. So, what is this, Doctor? Very painful condition. Uh, yeah, patient if presents with uh, constitutional symptoms, we can we cannot uh, characteristically demarcate the border, but it seems an uh, inframed lesion that is a feature of cellulitis, which Great. is mainly subcutaneous infection. 
course by again stafford um uh, streptococci and second staphylococcus Right. We have to always differentiate cellulitis with this next picture. I can see. Great. Cellulitis uh, uh, with this picture. Yeah. Uh, I uh, this is uh, this we can in the facial uh, plane we can see characteristically well demarcated subcutaneous infection. Uh, that's more diagnostic of erysipel erysipelas. In cellulite erysipelas is type of cellulitis. with more so superficial cellulitis involves subcutaneous tissue while uh, so erysipelas involves upper subcutaneous and deep dermal tissue so erysipelas has well demarcated border though cellulitis uh, can be common at any site mostly in the lower limbs erysipelas is common in an, uh, in any site followed by face second Great. most common site of erysipelas is always face and the treatment for both cellulitis and erysipelas erysipelas because these both are caused by gram positive organisms will be penicillin great now what is this flesh eating condition uh, where the risk factors can be advanced stage diabetes peripheral vascular disease or alcohol abuse what's the diagnosis as we can see there is formation of hemorrhagic bullae we can see necrosis of the skin uh, if we uh, go palpate the deeper planes we will see that subcutaneous tissue is hugely involved and uh, it could be a case of necrotizing fasciitis though we have other close differentials as we discussed gas gangrene also but yeah these uh, both differentials always go both hand in hand and this is more clinically depicting of a case of necrotizing fasciitis considering other uh, history as well as there isn't any point of trauma though there is although individual is very much immunosuppressed so necrotizing right. fasciitis is a very rapidly progressive disease and eventually leads to osteomyelitis Sure. Now here the skin is peeling out almost like a glove, and uh, it is also leading to multi-system illness due to staph aureus. So what is your diagnosis now? Staph aureus generally causes, as we all know, staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome, which is characterized by discamation of the skin. Superficial epidermis is peeled off, giving uh, the erythematous base of the lesion. Uh, it is generally common in children less than six years and neonates, and it is caused by epidermolytin uh, toxin A and B produced by Staph aureus. Great. So, what are these uh, characteristic lesions that are very commonly seen, even in medical students? Also, we see it very commonly. So, what are these, doctor? Uh, in this, we can uh, see characteristic red-colored papules. If we closely see these, these are di distributed uh, in the follicles. So it could be a folliculitis. Though we have very closest differential of truncal acne, but why this is folliculitis and why this is not truncal acne? That we have to always see clinically. In truncal acne, we can see other like comedones, pustules. in folliculitis always there is follicular distribution of papules which could be pustules as well right that's right and acne has other seborrheic distribution while this bacterial folliculitis is widespread can be present in anywhere over the body and is most common in the bed area in males great so acne staph aureus right acne would be the differential diagnosis to the Folliculitis, absolutely. And, and another differential could be pustular malaria as well. I would consider so. Again, right. but pustular malaria does not have follicular distribution. So, what marks folliculitis is follicular distribution, because folliculitis is confined to follicular ostium. It is a very superficial follicular infection. Great, doctor. Wonderful. Now, this lesion which is very typical, caused by staph aureus. What is this called, and what is this called? Here, in the first picture, we can see a nodular pustular lesion, which is indicative of furuncle, generally considering the site. In the second picture, we can see a deep infection, a large, uh, large nodular lesion uh, that involves multiple follicles, and feature is a feature of carbuncle. So, uh, furuncle and carbuncle, these, uh, these both go hand in hand. Furuncle is infection of single follicular ostium, which is deep, 
Folliculitis is superficial. Furuncle and carbuncle is deep. Furuncle involves a single follicle, follicle, while carbuncle involves multiple follicles and adjacent subcutaneous tissue as well. And abscess, if well, these if these keep on deteriorating and there is accumulation of pus in the area, yeah, if of course it forms an abscess and we have to go in, in for the incision and drainage of abscess. The furuncle and carbuncle are very much treated by oral antibiotics or topical antibiotics. And one important point to note is uh, until there is no fluctuance, we call it as a simple furuncle and warm compressive will do good. But the moment the sign of fluctuance comes or if there is an abscess, Okay. That becomes an indication for incision and drainage. Right. Great. Talk. Now I'm, we are going to run a quick count banega PG Pati quiz. Uh, the super antigen involved in toxic shock syndrome. What do we call that? <coughs> so uh, it is toxic shock syndrome 1 toxin, TSS1. Then there is a protease activity, it splits the epidermal desmoglein and involved in uh, staphylococcal scalded scale syndrome, uh, what do you like to, and bulla sympathico, what is this? It, it is epidermolytic toxin A and B. In staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, epidermotoxi, uh, epidermolytic toxin B is more correct, uh, more causative. And in bulla sympathico, it is ETA. Great. And what is this toxin which is seen in acquired MRSA strains um, and leading to increased virulence. It is Panton Valentine Leucosidin toxin, sir. Great. Panton Valentine Leucosidin toxin is uh, um, one which increases the virulence of uh, the uh, MRSA is what we need to remember. Now, uh, Yes, let's go to this question. So what is this uh, lesion that we are seeing here, Doctor? So again, uh, in here we can see a picture of neonate with a disquamated epithelium, which is a feature of staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome, which is Very an good. exfoliative dermatitis common in children and neonates. Initially, the lesion starts in the body folds as the uh, the lesion keeps on progressing progressing it, it might form uh, it, it might start exfoliating re relieving the erythematous base the as we discussed in staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome the uh, et toxin that is produced against desmoglein 1 and it is mainly etb type of toxin super super no. now this is out of uh, dermatology but uh, the most hated uh, thing in virology is to remember RNA and DNA viruses. So quickly, what are the various RNA viruses? Uh, I will take over because this is very little to do with dermatology. So Chogo virus, dengue white fever, yellow fever, HCV, the flavivirus, influenza, the mix. Rabies, the rhabdo, picorna, paramyxo, retro. These are all RNA viruses. Once more, one of the favorite questions is segmented RNA viruses. A common mnemonic is ROBA, R for Leo, O for Artomyxo, and um, uh, or Bora is easy to remember uh, because Bora is a very common surname in Assam. So, Bunya and Erina. Then in the RNA, what are the naked viruses? If you want to do perpetual colon exam, we do make the patient naked. So we can remember Picorna, Rio, and Calci. Now, what are the segmented RNA viruses? So Boda is commonly remembered. Bunya, B may look like three. Orthomixo, O looks like eight. Rio, 10 to 12, max. Erina is two. So this is Bora is what we generally remember. So the viruses that have segmented genome, Bunya viridae is three segment single stranded, Arthomix viridae is eight segment single stranded, and Rio viridae is 10 to 12 segments. Then this is the sure short MCQ in tumorous PG. 
all the DNA viruses have a linear DNA, linear DNA, and uh, uh, yeah, sorry, sometimes my slides go behind. Uh, yes, except Papo, Papova viride, Hepatna viride, which is circular DNA. All DNA viruses have double stranded DNA except the Parvo, which has got the single stranded DNA. All RNA viruses have a linear RNA except Erina viride and Gunya viride, which have a circular RNA. And all RNA viruses have a single stranded RNA except the Rio viride, which has a double stranded RNA. Now, my question to the doctor, um, Anchal, all these dirty things which have nothing to do with our finally doing clinical practice, but mercilessly asked in the entrance exam just to filter candidates. I want to request the board to ban this kind of questions, you know. You can go to Google and uh, find out uh, whether it is a naked RNA or a... Uh, wearing a uh, denim suit, who wants all that? So, but how do you used to manage uh, this kind of most hated to be remembered, but to be forgotten after the entrance is over? What do you used to do uh, for to handle these things? Sir, I had sorted the most forgettable such uh, clean, uh, questions so the, generally these questions were asked in pgi and aims a lot these are like a trend in pgi we used to get like multiple uh, like options for the same organism which one of the following is uh enveloped non enveloped uh, single standard and like that and in aims we used to get matched the columns so i had prepared a small notebook where i used to keep all these key points that I used to remember just one or two days prior to going to the exam. I always had the mnemonics. I will just go through the mnemonics just a day prior to the exam. See, in if PGI is in e, PGI Chandigarh exam is in evening, I would revise these mnemonics in the morning. It's like, <laughs> that's the only wow. way to <laughs> So what happened to the Bhagavad Gita written by Anshal Bansal? Usko kya kya? Topper banne ke baad. Uh... Uh, yeah. What have you done with your Bhagavad Gita that you have oh, I, created? I have preserved all those notes. <laughs> so you, you have? I have You still have them? Notes. Is there any way you can is there any way you can donate it to all of our uh, uh, audience? <laughs> or do you think that everybody have to make their own Bhagavad Gita and there is no I, way? I, I feel so. I feel so because everyone has a different strategy to remember things. The strategy that I am applying might be very complicated for another person. I genuinely feel that everyone should make it for themselves. Great. Though I, so, yeah, though I would be rather happy to help them that how to sort out such things. What points we need to mark to remember. There's not this whole bunch of things. We need, we need not remember all 50 viruses. We just need to remember those five viruses which are commonly asked in exam. Only those mnemonics. That's the simple thing. I yeah, the I can help them so help everyone in sorting out what to remember, not how to remember. That everyone has to figure themselves. Wow, that's wonderful, wonderful. And in fact, uh, thank you so much. So many uh, of our audience already are your fans, uh, Dr. Anchal, um, because after you be, we become topper, you know. The medical college is all like uh, uh, a acting stage. Ek scene ke baad ek scene badal jata hai. Undergraduate ke scene ke baad postgraduate scene hota, uske baad consultant hota, consultant ke baad HOD hota, or finally we uh, pass from one scene to the other. So that is the reason. Uh, but when we pass one scene, we need to look back and give a helping hand, a bit of inspiration. Sure the truth, the reality, what actually, how, how do we manage? Now, another very common question, every student uh, talk is, with attention or attention or anxiety or anxiety or kya hoga, kya hoga. So maybe you, you two might have had that phase. So what is your um, advice to the uh, NEET PG preparing students uh, on Dr. Murli Bharadwaj's show uh, that uh, how to manage anxiety? 
as i tell everyone this is the best phase the preparation phase is the best phase I, you are independent you can do anything it's you and only your books that you want to explore you want to do it you want to explore yourself how to reach your targets once you are into residency you don't get that free hand you don't know how to see patients you will always have to uh, work under some uh, like pressure so i sh- i genuinely feel that everyone should enjoy this phase though it's difficult we have very limited time we have limited resources we have another uh, mental pressures but eventually i think with the time they eventually go away and they are necessary somehow these pressures that we are building in our own mind these somehow keep us so uh, pushing till the date of exam once we come out of the exam then we realize these were nothing these were just the a uh, positive uh, factors that were pushing us more and more towards our target we should take always take them in positive way i feel it is like listening to lord krishna it is like listening to lord krishna uh telling that this is the best phase of life many times i to feel that only i should thank all the students because after cracking a top rank and doing md general medicine and while still in practice um, i still have a chance to be a pg aspirant every day you know when i talk about uh, the uh, upper part of the humerus or uh, gram positive organisms or uh, if i talk about uh, the wolf's proskoids reaction my other md general medicine fellows will say how do you remember all these things i tell that is the best phase of our life we all pass it through cracking the entrance so thank you so much for this very important point uh, doctor this is only a beginning like uh, there are at least uh, 15 to 20 episodes we will try to have and uh, we will pick up uh, around 500 most common questions in dermatology and uh, i'm very sure dr anchal will be our teacher um, in order to um, remember the things better in uh, dermatology so continuing uh, uh, continuing our journey doctor quickly uh, i'll quickly go to the uh, yes uh, the dermatology questions this lesion mainly seen in shepherds veterinarians goat herders and butchers so what is this lesion doctor uh, as we can uh, clean uh, from the history itself we can see that it's an occupational disease and the characteristic lesion is at the finger so uh, common in shepherds veterinarians of course it's caused is some zoonotic disease caused by a bad, uh, virus uh, orf also known as contagious pustular dermatosis as we can see a pustular white lesion at the base of the finger known as contagious pustular dermatosis or ecthyma contagiosum great so urf or contagious pustular dermatosis um, caused by the urf virus good this condition is no more there because corona is the king now once upon a time this used to be the king so what is this king so uh, if we can see there are monomorphic pustular lesions all over the face where, and we can see the toxic uh, look of the patient yeah it's uh, almost ir- uh, it's eradicated from all over the world that is smallpox which was transmitted uh, by by uh, respiratory droplets of course what we need to know today is about chickenpox which is more common in children and the difference that we study that we uh, why we study because it had monomorphic lesions that all lesions were of the same characteristic at a single time while it, while chickenpox that is polymorphic at a single time we can see various stages of the lesion and yeah. the question uh, the it is caused by variola virus and all lesions are in the same stage of development so pleomorphic lesions is a feature of chicken pox where pustules and vesicles etc are seen in various stages whereas in the case of the small pox all lesions are of the same stage as the carry home message now a recent contact with infected cow calves viral fomites 
So what is this diagnosis factor? Here on over the hand, we can see red papular lesions, red or red papular nodular lesions. One minute, sorry, I went. Uh, yes. Yes, no. Yeah. Can you change the slides? Yeah. Yes. In the second picture, we can see a nodular characteristic cherry red nodular lesion over the hand, and it is characteristic. If uh, if we clearly see, there is there must be some site of inoculation where this lesion has been formed. It is characteristic. Uh, if uh, uh, we would have taken a history, so the the occupation of the patient itself would have uh, clinched our diagnosis. It could be a milkus nodule, also caused known as pseudocowpox caused by paravaccinia virus. Great. So what are these inclusions called as and what is the specialty of this lesion? This is a very common disease presenting every day in dermatology or PD. Characteristic umbilicated lesions. Uh, these are uh, characteristic of molluscum contagiosum. In the it's very common, doctor. Every day we see it's in the very OPD. Common, very common. Children, like every, less than one year, children, we are from less than, less than one year to adults to <laughs> elderly, we are seeing this disease very commonly. Since it's a very is it, uh, more disease. common, uh, is it more, so, uh, sorry to interrupt. So, is, is it more common uh, in the agriculture background or uh, uh, urban or? Uh, uh, rural same and um, there is an I, I haven't noticed any such <laughs> predisposition to but it's very contagious and it's very common in children even this uh, when we extract we can see molluscum body on uh, we do a needling and extraction we extract the molluscum body and on microscopic examination we examine for intracytoplasmic HP bodies Hedinson uh, Peterson bodies Henderson, Patterson, molluscum bodies, which are intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. And we do cryosurgery, curettage, and imiquimod in the part of the treatment. Right. The HIV positive individual uh, presenting with this characteristic lesion. So many times this came up as an image based MCQ in the DPG exam. So, what's your answer, doctor? It's Kaposi uh, sarcoma as. Very clinching point that is HIV positive patient with such characteristic red nodular lesions, of course, goes in favor of Kaposi sarcoma caused by HHV8. I will ask you one uh, Count Banega Karodpati question here. What is that Hollywood movie which is very famous movie where uh, um, the Kaposi sarcoma lesions will be shown? You will open the shirt and show the Legions. You, you you know what is that movie? <laughs> no, sir. I mean, to, to become topper, sometimes we do few sacrifices. Uh, so at least now you watch this movie, Philadelphia. Philadelphia uh, is the movie where one advocate, uh, attorney is fired from the attorney law firm uh, because he's uh, HIV positive and he's gay. And a beautiful movie. And um, uh, he sues his attorney firm. And uh, typically in that movie, he opens in the courtroom and shows the Kaposi's lesions. So, I mean, one small, uh, um, <laughs> uh, small uh, uh, Hollywood flick. Yeah. So please go ahead, Dr. Yes. As you can see, there are four types of Kaposi sarcoma, of course classic AIDS related immunosuppressive. Uh, and African endemic. Good. So, generally, topical retinoids uh, have a role in management of them. And of course, highly active antiretroviral therapy. Uh, in fact, uh, 2020, uh, sorry, uh, 2000, almost two decades before, when I have done my post graduation in MD. Uh, I still remember uh, uh, MD first year means you will be thinking you are on the top of the world and only you know uh, everything. So my first case presentation that those days 
HIV was very rampant. So the first case presentation was that of a Kaposi's uh, uh, case I can never forget. So topical retinoid, please remember. Now, what is this lesion which is caused by HPV is called as? As we can see, this is a characteristic varicose lesion caused by HPV. Uh, and, and if we can see, there is not correct, uh, well defined lesion. It's very much widespread over a penis. It, it's more indicative towards a carcinomatous lesion, which is ill defined, so much proliferated, could be a varicose carcinoma caused by HPV. And uh, there are varied presentations. It could be uh, Bushkin. And uh, this, this appearance uh, reminds us which vegetable, doctor? Cauliflower. Cauliflower. <laughs> So cauliflower-like uh, lesions are uh, uh, very characteristic, called Bushke Levenstein's tumor is what we need to remember. So that's wonderful. And that brings us to the end of the today's wonderful evening with Dr. Anchal Bansal. And uh, on behalf of all our uh, great neat PG aspirants, some of them are going to come on this floor and share this uh, one of the evenings with me when they all become the toppers. And uh, thank you so much for giving your time. And we wish to have many more sessions like this and uh, a lot more wisdom and knowledge to get from you. And uh, probably some of the questions, I mean, classical cases, you can uh, 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 take a picture and then um, with the proper consent and uh, uh, we can have a case discussions also in the dermatology of the difficult cases that you have seen in the hospital. On the same floor, we will have many more occasions. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, sir.